Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm going to help you assemble your portable action grip basketball system with a 54 inch polycarbonate backboard. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your basketball system is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with the basketball system. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. There are steps within this assembly that require two people, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need two three quarter inch wrenches, two half inch wrenches, two nine sixteenths wrenches, a seven sixteenths wrench, two three sixteenths Allen keys, which are included, a rubber mallet, a Phillips head screwdriver, a block, a drill, you may just use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. A Phillips head bit and pliers. To make this easier, we're going to use a socket set and a socket adapter. Depending on how you decide to fill the base of your system, you'll need a hose connected to a water source or a funnel and 375 pounds of sand. This video is meant to be used as a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct replacement. So for the best results, make sure to have the assembly manual on hand during the build. It's also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Take the middle pole, which is the pole with the warning label and attach the pole bracket, making sure it's oriented like this. These nuts are center locking nuts and it's normal for them to be more difficult to tighten. Slide the top pole onto the middle pole, making sure the small hole closest to the end lines up with the slot at the top of the middle pole. Add the hardware and it's normal if it still spins once inserted. Now we're gonna seat the poles together by striking the middle pole on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. You will need to use some force, so be sure not to hit your toes. It's important that you complete this step, otherwise your system could separate during use, causing serious injury or property damage. Measure the poles, making sure it's no longer than 83 and a half inches. If it's longer, continue seating the poles until it measures less than 83 and a half. Slide the bottom pole into the bottom of the middle pole, making sure that the lip is on the opposite side of the pole bracket. Seat the poles together by striking the bottom end on a piece of scrap wood or cardboard five or six times. Again, you'll need to use some force, so be careful not to hit your toes. Be aware of the pole bracket's orientation so you don't hurt yourself while you do this. If you've assembled your poles incorrectly, click on this link here to see a video on how to separate them. Now we're going to secure the poles together by inserting a self-tapping screw into the small hole at the bottom of the middle pole and the bottom of the top pole.
Screw the cap onto the base, making sure the gasket is on the inside of the cap. Lift the pole onto the base, making sure the crimped end is facing up. Slide the wheel onto the axle and place it inside the notch on the base and then slide the axle through the hole into the pole. Once the axle is through, add the other wheel and then finish sliding the axle all the way through. With the assembly oriented like this, attach the flat end of the pole brace to the base, making sure the angled end is flat against the pole like this. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Attach the pole braces to the pole with the hardware. Lay the pole down and don't stand it back up until there's proper weight in the base. Now you can tighten the opposite ends of the pole braces. Add the hardware to these oblong holes on the rim, making sure they're oriented like this. When tightening the hardware, make sure it's on the outside edge and don't tighten it so much so that the rubber washer bulges. Line up the holes in the finger guard with the holes on this bracket on the backboard. Place the bolts on the rim into the holes on the backboard and secure on the underside with the nuts. Make sure to hold the head of the bolt with a wrench on the other side. Place the bracket onto the U-bolt and then place it on the other side of the backboard going up into the other set of holes. Thread the jam nut all the way down the threads on the U-bolt. Place the compression springs over the U-bolt, then the plate, and secure with the nuts. Only tighten these nuts enough until the rim doesn't wobble. Attach the backward brackets to the back of the backboard.
Attach the short extension arms to these holes on the backboard brackets, making sure they go on the inside. If you're having a hard time getting the bolt to go through the hole, you may need to use the threads at the end of the bolt to remount the excess powder coating in the hole. Only tighten the hardware enough so that the bolt is flush with the end of the nut. Attach the long extension arms to these holes on the backboard bracket, making sure that the two holes that are close together are away from the backboard. Now attach the hardware to this hole on the backboard bracket. Add the springs to the hardware we just added. Secure the short extension arms to the holes at the top of the pole through the holes at the end of the short extension arms. Attach the long extension arms to these holes on the pole, going through these holes on the long extension arm. Place the lock tab onto the trigger and then secure with the hardware. Then place the spring onto the trigger in this location. Slide the trigger into this slot on the handle, making sure it's oriented like this. Pull the inner channel out of the tube and then place the lock tab into this groove and secure with the hardware. Place the outer tube bushing on the end that has a small hole, making sure that the notch on the outer tube bushing goes on the same side. Wipe off any grease that may be on the inner channel. Line up the 10 foot end of the sticker with the end of the inner channel.
slide the notched end of the inner channel into the outer tube while squeezing the trigger and continue to slide it up until the end of the tube lines up with the 10 foot mark on the inner channel. When you let go of the trigger, the channel will be locked into place. Slide the channel stop onto the opposite end of the tube, making sure it's oriented like this. Attach the inner channel to the bracket with the hardware. Connect the opposite end of the outer tube to the holes at the end of the long extension arms. If you're having a hard time getting the holes to line up, you can squeeze the trigger on the handle to adjust the outer tube. Add the hardware to these holes on the short extension arms. Connect the other end of the springs to the hardware we just added. It may be helpful to use the closed end of a wrench. Now add the pole cap to the top of the pole. Now you can remove the plastic film from the backboard. Place the center frame pad on the bottom of the backboard and secure with the self-tapping screws. They are designed to go through the metal underneath. The corner frame pads will overlap the center frame pads and secure with the self-tapping screws as well. The next few steps will go over how to fill the base of your system, so refer to your manual in section 6 to see how to do this. You can also click on this link here to see a video on how to do this. We've already filled the base of the system, so we're going to move on to the next step. Now you can add the net to the rim. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime portable action grip basketball system with a 54 inch polycarbonate backboard. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.